the 24th State Senate District. I'm Paul Petrusky. I'm from Stevens Point, graduated from both high school and UW Stevens Point. After graduating from the university, I went into the Navy via Naval Officer Candidate School, served several years on active duty, then returned to the Stevens Point area, was hired by the Stevens Point Police Department, served there for just under 27 years before retiring in January of 2017. 18 months after retiring, uh, the city clerk in Stevens Point resigned two months ahead of the midterm elections. I had served as both a poll worker and chief election inspector for 20 years at that point, and some of the licensing functions of the clerk's office came through my position as the community resource sergeant for the police department, so I jumped in and served as the city clerk for Stevens Point from October of 2018 until January of 2020 when I made the decision to run for the state senate. So that's my background. Married uh, to my wife, Cindy, 34 years. We have two children of our own, and then we have three other children that uh, we've kind of picked up along the way, two of which from the International Friend Family Friendship Program at UW-Stevens Point, and the third is a close friend of our, our, our two biological children whose uh, single parent passed away, and when that happened, we just kind of added him to our family as well. I don't think the two are mutually exclusive. With uh, climate change, there's opportunities for manufacturing of alternative uh, uh, resources such as solar and wind. Uh, Wisconsin, and especially this area, has uh, got the Midwest uh, Renewable Energy Association just east of Stevens Point and Custer. That is a leader in, in that type of technology, and we can manufacture the parts that we need here locally and provide jobs to people while we address climate change. Climate change, I, and I know for some people, something they don't want to believe in, but just look at the weather over the last decade, the amount of, of severe storms that we've had year after year after year, yeah. the amount of flooding we've had. I, I know that a, a lot of the areas talking about seepage lakes being 18 to 20 inches above historical norms. Um, it's staring us in the face whether we want to admit to it or not, yeah. and we need, we need to make uh, some changes in the way we live our lives in order to reduce the impacts. Those bills are still awaiting passage in the state Senate. They passed the assembly, went over to the Senate. The Senate has not met since the early part of March, and they have no plans to meet before the end of this session, so those bills are going to die. Water quality in the central sands has been an issue for more than 25 years. I happen to know because my sister lived on a farm east of Stevens Point, and for several years had to take water jugs to work with her oh. to provide safe, clean drinking water for her family. This is something that we've known about for years. We just haven't had the political will to address it. So the year of water, uh, clean water by the, uh, issued by the governor in 2019, the speaker's task force were steps forward, but none of those bills have been passed to this point. So A, we need to pass those bills, but those bills are those bills are just a first step in addressing our water quality needs. Whether it's nitrate contamination here, PFAS and other parts of the state, or lead contamination with older lead uh, water laterals, we need to make some investments to make sure that everybody has access to safe, clean drinking water. I've already uh, signed the nonpartisan redistricting pledge. Three of the last five times uh, redistricting has been done in Wisconsin. It's been done by federal courts because uh, the legislature and the governor were of different parties and couldn't agree on maps. It's been done before by federal courts. We should, I, my, uh, my preference would be to follow the Iowa model. Iowa, when they get their census data back from the U.S. Census Bureau, submits it to uh, their, their university of Iowa modeling. They put it in the computer, the computer prints out maps and the legislature gets to vote yes or no on that map. If they vote no, it goes back to the computer, computer spits out another ma map 
and they vote yes or no. So the legislators are not drawing lines and creating districts that benefit themselves. And that's what we need to do. How exactly we do that, that's up for debate, but my preference would be the Iowa model and remove the legislator other than saying yes or no from drawing those maps. Part of the problem is, is that in Wisconsin, now we have 80 or 85 to 90% of the districts are non-competitive. They're safe for one party or the other. And in those districts, those representatives are more afraid of losing a partisan within their party's primary, which encourages people of more extremes to get elected and fewer moderates. And moderates in the legislature are what makes government work in times when we have split government between the legislature and the governor being of different parties. And that's been part of the struggle we've had for the last decade is we do not have that uh, ability right now in the legislature because there are very few, if any, moderates left in either party. One is change the way we do redistricting. Two, you have to start by reaching across the aisle and just having conversations uh, with members of the other party. That is not something that occurs frequently, if at all, in either Madison or Washington right now because of the way we, we do redistricting. Everybody's set in their own camps and they don't, they don't talk to one another. So A, we need to redo redistricting, and two, then we need to sit down and talk and have real conversations to move Wisconsin forward, no matter who's in charge, whether it's Democrats or Republicans, we all need, the, the motto is move forward in Wisconsin, and in order to do that, we need to work together. The state the Legislative Fiscal Bureau came out about a month ago and the impacts from COVID-19, at least at this point, have not been nearly as drastic and there's not a need for a, for a budget uh, reconciliation bill at this point. We do need to continue to monitor that going forward and we need to protect those things that we view as investments in our future. Things like education, we, we, we cannot disinvest in our future. So we need to protect certain things and take a look at, at others that eh, maybe we can postpone. But at the moment, uh, the Legislative Fiscal Bureau says there's no need for a, for a budget reconciliation bill. So thankfully, we, it's not been a great as impact as we had feared. The other issue with that is, is I would prefer uh, that the U.S. Senate take up the HEROES Act or in order to help with uh, local governments, especially local governments have been harder hit than and the state government has been at this point. I know uh, Stevens Point had to cut $2 million from their budget and other local governments as well. There is supplemental funding in the HEROES Act to help backfill not only state governments, but local governments for the expenses and revenue losses that have been experienced. As having been a poll worker myself and end up working in April when I wasn't scheduled to because of people dropping out, it's been good to see the number of volunteers, younger people who have stepped forward and some of the local businesses throughout the district have like, granted their employees the day off to work as poll workers if they choose to do so. But we need to have a more, more robust early voting and vote by mail system. Uh, part of... Uh, and, and, Looking at the, the returns so far, about 15% of the turnout from 2016, those votes have already been returned, 15%. We're here on October uh, 5th. And I'm guessing by the time November 3rd comes around between early voting and uh, absentee voting by mail, 60 to 65% of turnout will have already occurred before election day. So... The more robust vote by mail system, I think the restriction of early voting to the, the two weeks ahead of time is a mistake. The state legislature should not have done that. The ballots are at the municipal clerk's office uh, six weeks ahead of time. They have them. They have to have them because they're required to mail them out to military and overseas voters. Why anybody who stops in their municipal clerk's office when they have the ballots 
and wants to vote can't vote until the two weeks before makes absolutely no sense. They're already there, it can be done. So we, we need to expand early voting opportunities since the ballots are already available. If nobody budgeted for uh, what happened with this uh, last year, it has become increasingly difficult to hold in-person classes with the spike we're seeing in coronavirus. How the state, the, the local school district budgets are already set, property tax levies are set. If you're going to provide extra money and there's not a heck of a lot of extra money anywhere right now. Um, it would have to come from the state and that money could come from the HEROES Act to help with those costs. And especially in areas without uh, Wi-Fi, creating hotspots so people have access to the broadband that they need so they can access actual, you know, the, the school provided curriculum is something that's important. And then looking down the road, um, especially in rural areas, access to broadband internet is of huge importance for the future. A, people want to be able to work from home, and without that, they're not going to be able to. Plus, in times where we have, like, the pandemic, children need being able to access schoolwork. And then for homeowners, if you don't have access to broadband internet, people, especially younger folks who expect that your home is going to be worthless if you don't have that access. So looking down the road, Wisconsin's going to need to address uh, internet and broadband access, much like uh, electrification was done in the 1930s as an expectation that everybody be able to have that. And we're gonna have to treat broadband as a, as a utility and not a luxury. Specifically with uh, Wisconsin Rapids, as a child, my father worked at a consolidated paper mill here in Whiting. I feel that loss with family members who still work in the paper industry deeply. I am hopeful that uh, at some point, the, at least the pulp production facility in Rapids will uh, come back to life. I know the Park Falls mill just reopened after a year of being closed. So it's, it's, it's not completely gone away, but we need to work and provide incentives to bring that back. Part of the issue with uh, the coated paper that was being provided there, the demand for that was dropping well before. We should have seen and worked with Verso to find a different uh, product for them to make. Unfortunately, the state invested $3 billion in Foxconn, which reduced the ability to address other needs around the state when it came to uh, the economic uh, adaptations that needed to be made. So that's one of the things that we need to take a look at. And then we need to ask businesses what they need to grow, especially with our technical college system in Wisconsin. We have a great training opportunity to prepare people for careers of the future. And we talked earlier about uh, uh, climate change and green jobs. Those people can be trained at our technical colleges and they'll, they will make a family sustaining income, which are desperately needed, especially since we just lost 900, over 900 jobs at one facility. So we need to look to the future and that's one of the ways we can do that. One, Wisconsin's still one of 12 states that has not accepted Medicaid expansion. That would provide 80,000 Wisconsinites with health insurance. These are people who are already working. They make too much money to qualify for Badger Care currently, but not enough to avoid insurance on their own. These are the types of people that would be helped with uh, Medicaid expansion. And then we need to take a look at our, our health care system. Wisconsin is amongst the highest markets in the country. And our Medicaid reimbursement rates are amongst the lowest. If we accept Medicaid expansion, the state can, can uh, raise those Medicaid reimbursement rates, which would help especially rural health care providers in maintaining their financial viability. We've lost a number of rural health care 
providers over the course of the last decade because of the fact uh, they're not getting reimbursed enough when it comes to Medicaid and Medicare. As somebody who worked in law enforcement for nearly 27 years, this is an issue that's near and dear to my heart. Unfortunately, our jails have become our number one mental health and drug and alcohol treatment facilities for basically every county in the state. We're asking our criminal justice system and law enforcement officers to play roles that they're not necessarily trained to do. So we need to, especially with mental health, we need to treat that as a health crisis and not as a law enforcement and criminal justice matter and intervene earlier in these people's uh, health situations to prevent them from becoming involved in a, uh, a crisis situation that ends up with law enforcement being called as the, the primary responder. So we need to make sure that health and human services and our medical system are addressing the needs of people with those specific addiction and mental health issues before they become an expensive uh, uh, law enforcement and criminal justice issue. Our communities need to take an active role with their law enforcement. Uh, as far as uh, police and fire commissions, our civilian boards that oversee police departments in most of our, our larger cities, it, within the district, Stevens Point, Wisconsin Rapids, Sparta, Toma, those are the places need to make sure that policies are in place at their local departments and county boards with sheriff's departments and provide some civilian review and take in recommendations from different community groups as well as law enforcement as to what they see as needs. And we need to be honest with ourselves and understand that we do have an issue when it comes to how we treat different races. Uh, if you look at outcomes within the, the criminal justice system across the state, that's obvious. But we need to make sure that we do provide training to law enforcement, much like we have uh, mandatory training every year or two for driving, your driving a squad car and emergency vehicle operation or CPR or healthcare and use of force, some sensitivity training and cultural awareness training that is done on a, on a routine and ongoing basis is needed. And those, those Organizations such as police and fire commission and county board law enforcement committees need to main, take an active role in overseeing the departments in conjunction with their either elected or uh, you know selected leadership in those departments to make sure that the community is getting the service it deserves and need, and that's everybody in the community. I believe it's important that Wisconsin legislature work for the people of Wisconsin and work across party lines to do that. Given that what's occurred in the last six months, the state Senate hasn't met since the early part of March. My opponent, uh, Pat Teston, is the chair of the health committee in the state Senate. He's held exactly zero hearings on COVID-19 and what we should do in response to that, other than join in lawsuits to uh, impede the governor's ability to address critical needs at the time of a pandemic, they've, the state legislature's done nothing. We need the legislature, especially in times of, of crisis, to be working and addressing the needs of the state of Wisconsin. We've lost more than 1,000 of our fellow citizens in the state and over 200,000 across the country. A lot of that because of inaction. We need to provide, the legislature needs to provide some common guidelines for the state so that we can maintain safety for everybody. I know mask wearing is not everybody's favorite thing, but right now it's the best thing we can do to protect our family, friends, and neighbors from a global pandemic and from becoming ill or dying. So we should be doing that as a as just being a common courtesy to the people around us.